southern boys with the promise strength. Ain't nobody man enough to feel the pain. In a span of five days, five days, it took for the Goldberg vs. Brock Lesnar Survivor Series 2016 reaction video to get the 4,789 plus views plus 99 plus thumbs up. And I am happy and grateful for that. Welcome to the 7 Days Podcast where I discuss what happened on the past 7 days within the week. If you guys can, leave a like on this video, leave a thumbs up, follow me on Twitter at boy 123 gym That's when the link is always in the description of every video. I'm going to be honest, I'm on the news website right now before I can give you my thoughts on the Survivor Series Aftermath, which is the video, the title of the video. And uh, we're just going to start off here. The last time the two superstars fought in 2004 at WrestleMania 20 in Madison Square Garden. The former WCW and WWE champion was victorious. This time around, the WWE reported, reportedly wanted the Beast Incarnate to get his revenge on the 49-year-old wrestler in Goldberg, which was changed a week before the pay-per-view event. According to reports, Goldberg first signed a one match deal with the WWE. Maybe that's the reason why he was like Brock Lesnar. Not only does that mean you're next, but it also but the more importantly, it also means you're last. So that's probably what it means when he said that. That it was that he was scheduled to do a one match deal and then that's it. With the WWE. And then the plan was for the wrestler to lose the match to Lesnar. But after he signed the deal at a, a week or so before Survivor Series, the initial plan was to replace Goldberg. With the, what? No, sorry. The initial plan was replaced, and Goldberg emerged victorious in the fight. Moreover, the WWE's original plan was to build Goldberg versus Lesnar match as a real fight, which included MMA. Maneuvers, which would have been, which would have been awful. <laughs> I don't think anyone wants to see that. So after Goldberg beats Lesnar at Survivor Series, Goldberg comes out on the Monday Night Raw I went to the next night, saying that he is he's gonna be in the Royal Rumble. Goldberg is set to fight in the Royal Rumble match in San Antonio in the Alamo Dome on January 29th in 2017. Lesnar is also booked for that pay-per-view event, but whether will he be included in the, in the match is yet to be revealed. According to Wrestling Observer's Dave Meltzer, Lesnar could interfere in the match and get Goldberg eliminated just like he did back in 2004. From there, WWE could build a fight between the two at WrestleMania 33 to boost falling ratings of the entertainment company. WrestleMania is scheduled to be in Orlando, Florida for April 2nd, 2017. I really hate it when they're in April. I really do. Because it, it, cause it diminishes the fucking, you know, um, like doing in the video game. You know, it's like, why is it March that WrestleMania has to be in like four weeks, you know? Like they give it, they need to give us months properly, like how it is in real life. They need to do shit like that. But anyways, my thoughts on the Survivor Series aftermath. I am fifty percent on this. Fifty percent of me was like, good, fucking Brock Lesnar after years 
of Paul Heyman shoving it down my throat that Brock Lesnar beat the streak at WrestleMania. I've been sour since then. I've been waiting for someone that I love or like to beat Brock Lesnar. Clean. And Goldberg, surprisingly, was the guy to do it. Because I expected Goldberg to come in and lose and move on. Right? No. That didn't happen. We got the opposite. But then the other half, you know, it's like it's like you made a project. Right? I don't think anyone would use this analogy. It's like you made a project at school. Or you've been assigned to give to, to make a project. You're invested in this project. It took you a while, but you made the project. People are invested in. People actually like the project. People understand the work behind it. And then you decide, you know what? I don't give a fuck. I don't care. Hey, you, bald dude, you wanna you wanna destroy my project? Go right ahead. Do it within a minute and twenty five seconds. That's you know, it's 50-50. But what I will tell you is this. I love what happened. I love what happened. You're probably thinking, what the fuck? He just said 50% and then 96 No. The reason why I'm saying this is because it benefited me. It didn't benefit anyone else but me. It benefited me, a guy with a small, somewhat shitty channel, right? A guy who is a no-name on YouTube, right? Let me, let me go on my channel right now. I'll give you guys an update. You guys could look at it on my channel right now. <clears throat> this, this reaction alone gained me. About what? How many subs? I had 375. 375 subs. This video alone got me to 392. Think about that. So, I've gained 17 subs. Just from this video alone. What does that tell you? And this is the update on what it looks like now. 6,015 views. 100. My first 100 plus thumbs ups. Bro. I have never been so grateful when it comes to my YouTube right now. Because I feel like... I, I don't know. I, I feel like this shouldn't be happening. But it did. Obviously, it was the momentum. Obviously, it was everybody, you know, was like, they want to see people's reaction to what happened. And my reaction apparently got their attention to where 119 people thumbs up the video. And, and... Surprisingly, six freaking thousand and fifteen people decided to watch the video. Fifty three comments in the video of people saying, Bro, hilarious. I cried. This sir made my day. Um, comments like, like, people from, like, international, bro. Like, Saudi Arabia or wherever. Pakistan people. Like, legit people around the world are leaving comments, bro. Like, I I, I feel like... I, I don't know. I don't know how I should feel. I, I'm happy as fuck. And all I can say is thank you. Now, if you subscribe for the reactions alone, I've I I don't know I don't know if I'll be able to reach that limit ever again. Um, 
I will be doing reaction to every pay per view. I always do a reaction for the main event, right? Because I always do. And I, 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 I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. I was like, I was so, I was so shocked that night, to where, it, but. The one thing I, 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 that no one can take from me is that it was all genuine. It was real. It was a real reaction. I didn't plan it. Nothing. I was hoping for something big, and I got it. It was just like the reaction I did for the when Kevin Owens won the Universal title. It was real. It was, per, it was perfect timing. That's what I could say. So that's why I love it because I've I've gained so much just from that alone. From people saying disrespectful to the Undertaker, to the, it was their downfall. It was my it was my salvation, bro. It was my positive, their negative. That's why I love it so much because I gained from it more than I ever should have. And I just hope that, I mean, that was like a huge momentum. I don't know what I can do with this. But besides that, uh, I just, I don't know. Now, besides that, all right, let's just, let's just move on. Survivor Series was a great, was a great pay-per-view. I enjoyed it. All four hours. The two matches were my downfall were just... The Zayn and Miz and the Kendrick and Kalisto, because they was they were slow. They were they weren't like after Sami Zayn's entrance, I lost all energy for that match. And and then Barry Corbin did exactly what I called. I knew exactly that Barry Corbin was gonna come in and screw Kalisto out of the match. I knew it. I, I just knew it. If, if Kalisto cost Baron Corbin to be at a Survivor Series team uh, in, in the match, then he's going to cost Kalisto his Cruiserweight title match. I knew it was going to go down like that. And it did. Uh, Nia Jax getting eliminated how she did. I don't necessarily agree with it. I mean, she could have done it in a different way. But tapping out, I mean. I mean, it did look awkward, though, but I don't know. Um, so, uh, Charlotte attacking Bailey. I knew ex- I knew Bailey was going to be next. I knew Bailey, uh, Bailey was going to be fighting Charlotte for the title at Roblox. I know it. Well, no, and, and, and to prove it again, Sasha versus Charlotte on Raw for the women's title. But I, the, I'm going to say this once, and then... If it happens this month, if it happens tonight, I'm uploading this on Monday. Fuck it. If this happens tonight, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done with Raw. I'm done with Raw's women's division. Raw's women's division is garbage. Raw's women's division is, is, I don't care. I will say every negative thing if this happens again. Every woman on that Raw roster will not be safe. Not one. If Sasha Banks beats Charlotte again and become a three-time women's champion, I'm done. Not one positive. Unless they do something outstanding like my, my reaction video and all the feedback I got from it. Unless it's something outstanding, you will never hear me say anything positive for a long time with Monday Night Raw's women's division. Because I'm, I, it, it's like I said this about TNA many, many times. The Raw women's division is live. It's basically living off a machine, off of a machine, right? Without that machine, it will be dead. So, with that machine's help, it's giving it a little bit of life. So, if if this happens, finito, I'm done. It's over. I'm seriously done. Like, all the stuff I said for the past months, people are giving, people are, some people were telling me otherwise. 
You're full of shit if you're gonna like this again. And be like, yes, Sasha won the title again. Really? Like, I like Sasha since NXT days, bro. And when she... And when she was chasing the women's title and, you know, being all... Th being the real boss, how she should be. That was Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks today, all I see is a ratchet version of Bailey. You want to know what I mean? Smiling. Sucking up to the crowd. You know? Wearing flashy things. Bright colors. All she needs is the wacky waving if, if fucking tube men. And then she have it all. That's all. That's all she needs. Sasha Banks is not. <sighs> she's just not good anymore. I don't care. She's not good. She almost kills herself in the fucking ring most of the time. I can't take it anymore. I mean, if you love her, that's you, right? If you love her, that's great. That's great. You know that to the same people that loves Roman Reigns. I mean, I like him. I'm I'm a fan of him. You know. But when he if he gets to if he gets to a point where I disagree with it, then I'm just gonna say I disagree with that. Like him winning the main event of WrestleMania, I disagree with it. Him fucking uh, winning the title three times in four to six months, I disagree with it. But I'm still a fan, right? If you like Sasha Banks and you want to tell me how she's the greatest, then go ahead. But you're not gonna change my mind. I can't take it anymore. She's stale. She needs to change. I may sound like a fucking smart. I have a brain. I think. Okay? Here's the thing. I look at Sasha Banks. If I... Look. Sasha Banks is like the New Day now. You see, I'm not doing no bandwagon shit. I'm being legit. Alright? If, if, if they do something to turn me around and be like, you know what? I like this. I actually like this. I hated it at first, but I like it, right? Then, then they done something right to get my attention. How do you think fucking Matt Hardy got so many attention on the internet? He did something to catch their attention, and then now everybody's talking about it. But now, right? Like, I, I, I guarantee you, if Matt Hardy didn't turn broken Matt, then none of this TNA. I don't know. I don't know where TNA would be right now. Lower ratings, and it would probably be done by now. So, like, you get what I mean? Like, I don't do bandwagon shit. If you, if it's something I like, if it's something that you caught my attention to where I like it at first, and then you continue to get my attention more, and then I start liking it more, then you have my attention fully, 100%. But if, if, um, if you fucking ruin it, people ruin things for me, a lot. I remember, I remember this, I'm not afraid to admit it. I remember, I used to listen to Drake's, uh, the Call Me On My Cell Phone track, right? And it's a it's a nice track to listen to. I listened to it at the time, and then after that, I'm going to McDonald's to get food for my sister. And then, ratchet bitches, you have no idea, fucking playing the music too loud, dancing it, ruining the track, fucking singing it, awful. I can't take it. People ruin things for me. When I like something and then people like the same thing, but they have a way to ruin it for me. To where I'm like, you know what? I can't. I can't I can't enjoy this now. You ruin it for me. Fuck it. It's like when someone spoiled you a good movie that you wanted to see for the longest time. And then someone's like, yo, this shit happened. And like, fuck you. That's what it's that's what it's like to me. So when, when, but people, I, I see comment after comment after comment on Twitter and all this other stuff. How people just fucking worship the New Day, worship Sasha Banks. I'm like, how do you not see, like, like, I, I, how do you not see what I see? 
yeah, sure, we have different opinions, but how do you not realize that they're doing the same thing? They have not changed in the longest time, and they're just it's just plain old. I mean, you could come at me with Cena, right? But Cena at least changed up a little bit. Character-wise, that he hasn't changed. And do I blame Vince McMahon for not changing him? No, I do not. Business-wise, no, I do not blame Vince McMahon for not changing John Cena. Because the man's giving you, the man's making you money. You gotta drain the fuck out of that thing. To where you can't make money off of it anymore. That's business. And I understand it and I respect him for that. How do you think Stone Cold was, was able to be alive for so long in the WWF in the Attitude there? Every week, something big happened with Stone Cold, and people watched. The majority of the crowds had Austin 316 shirts or Stone Cold Steve Austin shirts anywhere. So, what I'm trying to say is, I can't take it anymore. This needs to end. I've been begging. I thought it would end the Hell in the Cell. I'm fucking wrong. Sasha Banks lost the title in the worst fucking way. I got what I wanted, Hell in the Cell, yeah, that's great, women doing extreme stuff to prove that they are at the same level the, of, uh, as the men, but at the same time, they did it so bad. They did it to a point where I can't accept this as a Hell in the Cell match. I can't. So they're going to go to Raw and Charlotte, defend the women's title, and... Like I said, if they, if Sasha wins the title, I'm finished. I'm done. Finito. It's over. I, I can't take it anymore. I don't care. I just don't care. Why should I care? SmackDown Women's Division is all I care about now. Uh, I see Nikki. I see Carmella. I see Alexa. I see Becky. I see Natalia, even though she's fucking cringeworthy, but still. I see every woman. Not even Naomi. Naomi there, too. I see every woman. That I wanted to see on TV for a while. They're on TV. They get their own time. Raw. Same old. Sasha Banks. Now they're now they're injecting Nia Jax and Bailey now. You're you're freaking three months too late. I'm sorry. You should have started in September when Raw had their own pay-per-view exclusive like they they could have had they could have done something right but no they didn't do shit Bailey was injected to the championship match Nia Jax was doing jack shit fighting Alicia Fox like anyone cares and that's it so that's my thoughts on Sasha Banks versus Charlotte I don't care it better not main event raw because it doesn't deserve it anymore they done it it's over like it, it, it's done no one cares anymore to me, no one cares. Or I don't care. I don't care. I'm not speaking for anyone else. I'm speaking for me. I don't care. They should not main event Raw. They don't deserve it now. This time, they don't. Before, yes. But now, they don't. Because it's it's just the same old, same old. I'm the queen. I'm the boss. You try to break my back. I want a rematch. Simple, simple, blah, blah, blah. And then we have the match. I don't get it. I think it's like why it's like I always like that's what I, I, I'm a thinker I sit and think about things like I just sit and think why like why do we have to see this again and again like I, I've said it before and I'll say it till I'm blue in the fucking face when it's Cena and Orton, a Zane and Owens or I don't know who right People complain, oh my god, they need to end it. Oh my god, it's boring. Blah, blah, blah. Right? Sasha Banks and Charlotte have been feuding for nine months straight. For nine months. Since since Sasha Banks came back on TV at the Royal Rumble in January of this year. Ever since then, they've been feuding. Tell me I'm wrong. Tell me I'm wrong. You cannot tell me I'm wrong. Because from January to WrestleMania, Sasha Banks is off TV for a couple uh, uh, a couple of weeks. She comes back, fights Charlotte and Dana Brooke with Bailey at Battleground. And then 
won the title on Raw, won, and lost the title at SummerSlam, won the title back on Raw, and then losing the title Hell in the Cell. It, it's the same old dance. They've been feuding since the Rumble, and I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. And I said this in my take when I was recording this before. If you're a kid, I don't blame you. If you're enjoying it and you're a kid, I don't blame you at all. But if you're my age and you're still liking this, I I have to disagree. I have to disagree and say what are you, like you gotta think it. You gotta think. They, you gotta think. There's people. There's other people on the roster, and they're just they're just using the same people, bro. If I did that in Universe small, do you think I would make it this far in YouTube? If I push the same people in Universe mode, do you really think I would make it this far? No. You think people are going to watch my pay-per-views? My WrestleMania? No. They're not going to watch shit if I'm going to push the same people in the game. No. Then No, there's no way. Like they got they they have to do something to catch to catch people's attention. I don't know what they have to do, but besides that, uh, Seth Rollins versus Jericho in the in a Universal Championship match, uh, no disqualification, no holds barred, to where Jericho and Roman Reigns are banned from ringside. I that was probably the best match on Monday Night Raw. In the main event, main event wise, main event wise, this is the best main event on Monday Night Raw in 2016 since, uh, I think since Jericho and Seth Rollins first fought in the main event on Monday Night Raw, uh, months ago, in my opinion. That was the best main event. Or since, uh, Kevin Owens won the Universal title. I don't know. But since then, this is the, that was the best main event. On Raw. So. That ends. Jericho costing Rollins. Even though he was banned from ringside. Let's see what repercussions Jericho is going to get. This Monday night. Tonight. On Raw. And. We'll see. We'll see. What happens. Um. So we move on to SmackDown. We move on to SmackDown. Um. In you know, Ottawa. Ottawa wasn't a good crowd. Ottawa disappointed me. Maybe Ottawa is one of those towns in Canada. I think I think I think uh, Ottawa is the one place you should not go to in Canada. I, I I think so because they weren't good. If it was a Calgary or Edmonton, Alberta or or some or somewhere like you know, if it was anywhere else but Ottawa, it would have been a great crowd. So we had the tag team turmoil. I thought I, I I I was hoping maybe at Usos, and and I really hate it when people rip on the Usos like how they used to be. It's like just stop. You you liked them before. You you just hate it because just just like the New Day, they got old and stale, and you wanted them to change. And unlike the New Day, they actually did change in the Usos. But anyways, but I mean, I like the Usos when they were how they were before, but I love them how they are now. They're sicker than before, so I'm just going to leave it at that. The Usos, I thought they are going to win this match, uh, but the American, uh, American Alpha got the win. And I was like, okay, but I would love to see the Usos get the win, but it is what it is. And then the Wyatt family with Orton got involved. They're like, you haven't fought every tag team. You're going to fight us next week. Run. And then, yeah. So, the Wyatts versus American Alpha. I have a big smile on my face right now. Oh, my God. I can't wait for that. That is going to be lit. That's going to be that's gonna be some fun-ass shit, in my opinion. Think about RKO's when they try to go for the Grand Apple 2. Think about that. Think about that. Think, just think about that. Um... I, I really hope that I the, my prediction. I hope the Whites get the win and they go to fight the tag champs and they beat the tag champs because I want to see Randy Orton win tag team gold. 
or tag team dimes or nickels because they're not really gold. But you know what I mean. Um, I want to see the Wyatts get the win. Bray Wyatt deserves a championship for so fucking long that it took Survivor Series for Bray Wyatt to get to this point. If the Wyatt family needs to win the tag team to be taken more seriously than before, I am all for it. I want it. And I want it done. And I want it done in an awesome fashion. Hope, Hopefully we get that done. Now, people will be ripping on James Ellsworth, how they want him to leave, go back to the indies. And it's funny, they said that's James Ellsworth, but when it's like a, a, uh, I don't know, when it's like an in, internet darling, and then it's a different story. You know, I, I, I don't, I don't get it. You see, James Ellsworth to me was just, yeah, he was a jobber. Yeah, he was a jobber. He still is, right? He's just a guy that, I'm going to be honest, you guys did this. You guys did this. The WWE didn't do this. They merely just brought James Ellsworth just to be a jobber, and that's it, finito. Done. But there was memes. There was talk about him, about having a fighting chance, having a dream and whatnot. You guys did this. Not the WWE. Think about it. If there wasn't no memes, no uh, mentioning him on Twitter, nothing had nothing to do with him on the internet, then WWE would not have James Ellsworth to begin with. That's how I look at it. Look at it from the beginning and look at it now. If James Ellsworth didn't get over because of you, then we wouldn't be sitting here talking about James Ellsworth. So I'm grateful to see the guy because... If I was in his shoes, I would do whatever it takes to stay in WWE. Alright? No matter what these freaking people are saying about me, I don't care. I'm there. I'm making money. I'm with the top superstars. I'm in a major storyline with the WWE Champion. Think about that. And these are the same people that complain about AJ Styles not winning the title, not being taken seriously, freaking losing Roman Reigns so many times, including myself. I'm glad to see AJ where he's at. I'm happy to see AJ Styles being the WWE Champion. I'm happy to see AJ Styles being taken seriously. Yeah, sure, he's doing some comedy shit, but he's putting someone over. Like a James Ellsworth, who we thought that was just a plain dude, just to, just there to get, just to lose, and then that's it. No. You guys did this. The fans... The people that made the memes, that talked about him on Twitter, that made him noticeable and talked about on the internet, that got the WWE's of, uh, attention to where they're like, we got something here. To where they took it, to their advantage, and look what they got now. They signed him a contract. Because of you guys, he's living his dream. Right now. And I, I, I'm not bullshitting when I say this. Everyone. Everyone. That's a WWE fan. Wants to be in the WWE. And if you don't. If you don't dream about that. Then you're a fucking liar. Because in reality. It's, it's a fact. That everyone. No matter how many times you shit on the company. No matter how many times. That you fucking hate it and you hate the people in it. You want to be in the company. You want to work with WWE. You want to be in the company because of the th because of the passion, the love you have for. So let the man live his dream. All right. If it was anyone else, I don't know how it would be different. I don't know how people would respond if it was someone else. In that pos in James Ellsworth's position, but think about it though, if you were given a contract be just because you were there as a comedy uh, a comedy character, I would still do whatever it takes to stay. He's on TV every week. He's being mentioned. He's being chanted like he if he's Goldberg Ellsworth. I don't understand you people. For those, I, I get it. He's in the main event title picture. But at the same time, wouldn't you want to do the same thing? Wouldn't you want to be in, in his position? 
being there with the with the greatest wrestler ever in AJ Styles, with the WWE Champion, with Dean Ambrose, with Shane McMahon and Daniel Bryan on SmackDown, really? You don't want you don't want that. If you don't, if you if you say you don't want that, like I said, you're a fucking liar. So, Ellsworth, right? I actually fell for this. I don't know why I did. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ. I forgot that he signed the fucking contract. I was like, we're not going to see Ellsworth ever again. Oh, no. Right? And then... He won the match. He beat AJ Styles in the ladder match, which was hilarious. Dean Ambrose came in dressed as what I was... What was brought to my attention. Uh, a former WWE superstar, The Goon. Dean Ambrose was dressed as the goon, <laughs> wearing hockey gear, and then beat up AJ Styles. AJ Styles dropped him with a phenomenal form. Um, AJ Styles went up the ladder, trying to get the contract. He was playing around. Ellsworth pushed him off the ladder. AJ Styles took a nasty bump to where he looked like he fucking got himself injured badly. Thank God he was not injured. AJ Styles is a miracle worker, bro. If he got injured... I would be depressed as a fan right now. But thank God he's not injured. AJ Styles somehow able to climb back up. And then he got caught with a no chin music. And then Ellsworth with damaged ribs and all. Grabbed the contract. And on Talking Smack right in front of Daniel Bryan and Renee Young. Even though it was very awkward and weird and kind of whack. I'm not going to lie. When... They were chanting for Ellsworth in the Talking Smack room. But anyways, he signed the contract. Bam. He's there. And I love it. He's living his dream. I can't blame him. He's doing something what I dream of right now. Signing a contract with with WWE, World Wrestling Entertainment, on the paper. Signing it. He's doing exactly what I want. And I don't blame James Ellsworth for that. So, TLC's coming up this Sunday, um, live in Dallas, Dallas, Texas. You are lucky fucking people, you know that? WrestleMania, well, not Wrestle, WrestleMania, nah, not nah, let me take that back. WrestleMania wasn't a great show, but you, you know what I mean. Like, you're getting some good places, though. You know, like, Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania, uh, sadly, WrestleMania. And then you're getting TLC, look at that. So... TLC is coming up this Sunday. Uh, I will get my predictions. Hopefully, the homie at MikeWill87 will give me a TLC preview layout so where I can discuss uh, the well, the matches at TLC. I will give you my predictions later on this week. You know, yeah, sure, they had two weeks to build. That's not really good in reality, but I realized that they were building up to TLC at the same time as they're building to Survivor Series. Think about that. So, besides all that, um, TLC this Sunday. I can't wait. I'm actually hyped. I, and, I, and that's another thing I'm thankful for. I can watch pay-per-views on the network. The network is the best thing they ever done. Because without the network, I won't be able to watch pay-per-views. Uh, unless, well, now, recently, I found out about fucking... I found out how much of a miracle worker my fucking laptop is to where I can watch live streams of pay-per-views. I couldn't do that before because my computer was old as shit. But now this laptop is the best thing I've ever had right now. Minus the PS4. But, yeah. So, pay-per-view coming up. Can't wait for that. And we'll see what happens on Monday Night Raw to, uh, tonight. Now, on Lucha Underground, Lucha Underground, let's see. Nothing much I remember from it. All I could think of was Sexy Star losing the championship within a week to Johnny Mundo. Mundo cashed in his Gift of the Gods title and was able to get the job done. Now, I thought, I remember, I remember the finish. Uh, Sexy Star, I was beating up Johnny Mundo. And after she was going to, I think, high-five a fan in the crowd, was wearing a mask. And she got attacked by that fan. And then the fan brought her into the ring. And then Mundo capitalized and pinned her. And then won the match. And I'm thinking. At first I was like. Who is that? I thought. It was Johnny Mundo's girl. Melina. I thought it was Melina. But. It was his. 
his associate associate in the uh, Worldwide Underground. I don't know her name, but it's the same woman that I praised before, saying that she's the best. She's better than any fucking woman on the Raw rosters division. And I'm not saying that to fucking boast about it. It's a fact. She's better than all of them. If she can hang with the dudes, she's better than all of them. So, that's it. Yeah. Oh, by the way. The greatest thing has happened. Now, if you haven't uh, paid attention to TNA like I do. Well, I I barely do, but I catch up on some important stuff. D, what's it? DC3 or DCC? I don't know what the fuck they named the group. With the white mask, I thought it was like a debut of new people. No, it's it was James Storm, Bram, and some other dude. And they're after the Hardys. They're after uh, Eddie Edwards. So, I mean, what's going on with James Storm? I thought he left TNA, but I guess not. Shit. But the greatest thing that happened. You see, Matt Hardy... When those guys, like I said, like at the DC3 or DCC, I don't know fuck, right? They, one guy pushed Matt Hardy off of a, fork, a forklift where he hit his head on the floor, right? He lost his memory. Amnesia, right? And then Jeff Hardy was trying to bring him back. Rebby, his wife tried to bring him back. Senior Benjamin, everyone was involved trying to bring him back. They even sang... The Fatal Way It Classified Himself as Obsolete song to him. And he's looking at him like, what? Like, is that where I come in? Like, like who are you looking at? I, it, it, what? I, I don't know the song. Like, you know, like, Matt Hardy was completely clueless. I'm not going to lie. I think Remy tried to, tried to use him to clean up. She, I saw a tweet. She was like, remember you used to clean the house? Get to it. I was like, for real? You gonna you're gonna do that, Rebby? You're, you're gonna use his his memory loss as an advantage for him to clean the house for real, <laughs> for real. And then it took them weeks, I think, a couple weeks. But then in the end, this past Thursday night, it finally came. It came to a close, because you see, Matt Hardy was gonna have this ice cream party or something, a gathering at his house, right? Some guy was in a referee shirt, came in. It was the same referee that refereed the final deletion match. That referee had a tablet, and he showed Matt Hardy what he's done over the year. He won the world title in his home state in Carolina at Bound for Glory last year. And then, uh, he became, uh, he defeated um, EC3 with the help of Tyrus and his wife, on the impact when they went live, the first impact of the year, when they went live on Pop TV, and he won the World Heavyweight Championship and became the iconic Matt Hardy, Big Money Matt, right? And then after that, he became broken Matt Hardy later on. He tried to show him everything. Rebby was trying to look. Rebby uh, looked outside her door, trying to see like, did it work? He was, she looked at the referee like, did it work? The guy was like, no, nothing. And I'm like, come on. When are we going to get Matt Hardy back? Jeff Hardy cannot fight these guys alone. So then, Matt Hardy was like having an argument with, with Rebby. Rebby tried to tell him, look, you got to remember all this. Jeff can't fight these guys on his own. You got to remember all of this. You got to remember it now. And Matt Hardy like, I can't remember none of this stuff. All this obsolete, delete, delete, delete nonsense you're talking about. I don't eat people. I want to hug people. I want to be nice to people. If he, he basically DMXed himself at this point. He was like, Lord, give me a sign. Like he was like, just give me a sign. And then lightning struck his ass. Lightning hit him. And then Matt Hardy was down on the ground, lying down. Rebby came through. She's like, are you okay? Like, Matt, Matt, are you okay? Matt Hardy looks at me like, he's like, I'm okay. He's like, and then he opened his eyes like, I am 
broken yes i was jumping for fucking joy when he said that i'm like the broken brilliance has returned and i'm like thank god so now i can't wait for what's gonna happen this thursday on impact <sighs> i think that's it is there is there anything else i have to discuss about Fuck it, I'm just gonna go on this website from the Inquisitor. Before I go, it's been like 44 minutes right now. Holy shit. WWE News, real reason why Vince McMahon wanted Goldberg to squash Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series. Now let's see. I'm gonna read the entire thing. The WWE Universe is still buzzing about the result of the match between Goldberg and Lesnar during last week last weekend's WWE Survivor Series 2016 pay-per-view. The rematch begin, uh, between the two men from the disappointing bout, which I didn't find disappointing. I loved their match at WrestleMania 20. Eat a dick. All right. Don't tell me otherwise. I love it. I love the story. Everything. The hype. Everything. I love that match. All right. They had Stone Cold as referee. Anyways, uh, from the disappointing bout at WrestleMania 20s, still let still let down many within the WWE Universe for an entirely different reason. It was Goldberg's do dominant win over Brock Lesnar in under two minutes that has people complaining this time. Like I said, I liked it because it benefited me. That's why. Brock Lesnar, anyone over cleanly since Triple H defeated him at WrestleMania 29 over three years ago. By the way, if you don't know this, Brock Lesnar actually called for this. He wanted Goldberg to, to, to squash him like that. He wanted this. He saw money, and yeah. And after what happened at WrestleMania uh, 32 with Dean Ambrose, I honestly do believe that Brock Lesnar does not care about the business that much anymore. Obviously, he cares about money, which I don't blame him because if you're a businessman, money is your main objective. Anyways, uh, WWE has booked him very strongly since he broke the streak of The Undertaker at WrestleMania 30 in, Orla in New Orleans. About to say Orlando, Florida. My bad. Many WWE fans thought a young talent who who could make their name on, the, on being the first to beat Brock clean was the right booking decision, but but Goldberg became that that man at Survivor Series. So yeah, like I said, I don't necessarily agree with it. I'm not going back on my word. It's just I like it because it benefited me. That's why it benefited you for the reaction. That's the main re I like mean, the reaction you you would have got if Lester Wan was just to be sitting there and be like, oh, Suplex City, Brock Lesnar beat Goldberg, and then that's it. Yeah. And then maybe the run and I raw went the next night would have been boring as shit. But anyways, originally, WWE officials wanted to book Goldberg vs. Lester 2 as close to a real MMA fight. And it would and it would have been a war. Which is what most people thought was, was planned by the powers that be. However, it was reported that Goldberg tweaked his shoulder, which made it risky for WWE to book the match with Lesnar to be longer. Once WWE made the made the, made that decision, Vince McMahon decided a squash match was best, and surprisingly, he's correct. Because if Goldberg went on for longer than I don't know five minutes. The fans would have shit on the match. The fans would have seen Goldberg be exposed. And plus, Goldberg would be hurt in the process. So, all negatives. So, yeah, I, I, I'm not really pissed off or upset that we got what we got. Because we get to see Goldberg in the Royal Rumble. There we go. According to a news report, the decision was made by WWE officials and Vince McMahon for Goldberg to squash Brock Lesnar at Survivor Series. Because it was the result that would that would create the most buzz and set up Goldberg for the Royal Rumble match in January, and another match between Goldberg and Lesnar. Now people were saying, "Oh, so Goldberg has to fight Brock Lesnar again after the third match?" Now I honestly see it like this: Look at the Rock and Stone Cold. Stone Cold beat the Rock twice, straight. 
at WrestleMania. He beat no, not not straight, sorry, but he beat The Rock twice at WrestleMania. WrestleMania 15 in Philadelphia, WrestleMania 17 in Houston, Texas. Okay, then WrestleMania 19 comes around, and The Rock beats Stone Cold, and then there. That way, The Rock cannot walk around and say, "I am never being Stone Cold at WrestleMania." I he can't do that. He can't walk around and say that. So that's what I see. They don't have to do a fourth match. Do what they did with Rock and Austin. Yeah, sure, Austin had to leave the WWE because he was injured, right? But do what they did with Rock and Austin. You know, they don't necessarily have to do a fourth match because then, then people would be like, fuck this match. You know, fuck this. Fuck Goldberg. Fuck Lesnar. I'm done. I'm out. Like, I'm not interested, period. Right? So, they don't necessarily have to do that. Just do what they did with Rock and Austin. Make Brock get that one win at WrestleMania. Get that. That's where it matters, actually. That's the important part. Brock getting the win at WrestleMania because that's where he got his loss at WrestleMania. That's the important part. Few people were expecting Brock Lesnar to be dom- to be dominated, to be dominant. Sorry, the way he was by Goldberg. It was it, it it's been reported that it was done to surprise. <laughs> wow, really? It was done to to surprise quote smart marks. Jesus Christ. However, WWE officials and Vince McMahon thought that Goldberg winning so quickly was true to the character and generated the most buzz for the company as WWE heads into the Rumble next two months, I think. Yeah. Which Goldberg already confirmed to be a part of next year. Reestablish, reestablish, uh, I can't pronounce that right. Jesus Christ. Oh, I need to go back to school. Goldberg and generating buzz is logical. Quote, I'm, I'm reading from the Inquisitor, so don't don't jump down my throat, okay? But a lot of WWE fans are upset those things came at the expense of Brock Lesnar, who dominated the roster for over two years. On paper, it makes the entire roster look bad if Goldberg who hasn't wrestled in 12 years, in a dozen years, could defeat Lesnar so easily. Like I said, if Brock lost to Goldberg, I didn't thought of him losing in a quick fashion, but if Brock lost to Goldberg, it'll make him look like a bitch. That's what I, that's what I said. I said and I stick by it. But, like I said, it benefited me in the end, so fuck it. Uh, could, uh, could beat Brock Lesnar so easily. When he was making a decision, Vince McMahon didn't believe the loss will hurt Brock Lesnar in the long term. Wow. That's actually shocking. That's actually fucking shocking. Vince McMahon is said to the banking on the WWE Universe have having short-term memory when it comes to Brock Lesnar's loss at Survivor. <laughs> <laughs> Ha! Ha ha! Wow. Woo! He just called you guys fucking idiots. Wow. Wow. Having short term memory. Yeah. Speak to those people about Benoit. The 9 11. Or. Or speak to those people of the Owen Hart that, that, that watched him fucking died in 1999. These people don't forget what happens. Vince, you have short-term memory. God sakes. WWE Universe having short-term memories. Yeah, the kids maybe. But if someone breaks it up, they'll be like, oh yeah, that did happen. And then they'll be so intrigued if to make sure that it did happen that they're going to look it up on the internet. And then bam, it's right there. Think. Think. And damn, this fucking podcast has gone from 27 minutes to an hour. I, I planned it to do some 27 minutes, but an hour? Jesus Christ. <sighs> Jesus, this 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 is just stupid. The plan seems to be for Goldberg versus Lesnar 3 to be taking place at WrestleMania 33 next year in Orlando. Lesnar will get his victory at that event and then... And then can continue as Beast Incarnate. Incarnate. 
My lips are so dry. The fact, the fact that, the fact is that WWE Survivor Series was about Goldberg, not Brock Lesnar, and that's actually true. Because if, Bro- if Goldberg lost, this is why I said this was a lose lose. If Goldberg lost, then people people would just people. I don't know. I don't know how people will feel about Goldberg, but if it, it would not be positive if Goldberg lost, and if Brock Lesnar lost, it would be positive. It would it would it would have been a negative. So there you go. I've been right from day one. WWE's logic had more to do with Goldberg returning to WWE in a big way than, let me quote Michael Cole here, than the WWE, fucking asshole, fans told them for months that Goldberg vs. Lesnar was the match they wanted to see. If anything, Survivor Series proved that even after a dozen years, Goldberg is still one of the biggest draws in the business. Naturally, WWE would want to keep that going into into two of the biggest pay-per-views uh, the company has ever had in WWE's history. Hopefully, their booking over the next few months holds up because the WWE Universe is still divided on what happened at Survivor Series. The Rumble will be the next big decision. And that is it for the podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed the podcast. This is legit an hour, an hour, good grief, an hour. I've never done an hour. I n- my the podcast. I never wanted to do an hour podcast because I look at it from uh, as a viewer's uh, standpoint. Like, do you really think I got all that time? Listen to your bitch ass for an hour, like you know. But I just felt I kept. I just felt kept. I, I just kept going. I feel like keep, keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't stop. So, that is it. I had to look up to see if there's anything else I want to talk about. There's nothing much to talk about. So, what do you guys think on this entire thing? If you remembered anything I just said in this in, in this hour podcast, do you, do you have anything to say in this podcast? Do you agree what I said about Sasha Banks and Charlotte? Do you agree what I what I thought about Goldberg and Lesnar? Leave your comments. Leave your opinions down below. All right, give me your thoughts. Speak from the heart. I'm not trying to go deep on y'all. Pause, but speak from the heart. Be honest. What did you think? What did you think in the past fucking week? And. If you have not, the if you want to check out the Survivor Series uh, Goldberg Lesnar reaction, the link is in the description box below. My Monday Night Raw after Survivor Series reaction, the link is in the description box below because I went to their live. And yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Leave a like on this video. Subscribe now for more. Follow me on Twitter at Boy123Gym. I thank you for the for the views and the thumbs ups on that reaction video. I thank you very much. Love you all. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Follow me on Twitter, like I said. Leave a like and subscribe. And I am out. Uh, later.